and something that we are currently launching as well is the OVSR POE, so the short range and the POE version, which has the time of flight sensor. Hello, everybody. Welcome to OpenCV Weekly Webinar. I'm Satya Malik, the CEO of OpenCV. And today we have with us Eric Kokel, who is the Director of uh, director of Applications Engineering at Luxonis. And as uh, many of you know, Luxonis is the creator of OpenCV AI Kit. And today we are going to learn more about OpenC uh, OpenCV AI Kit Series 2, which is the new iteration of the hardware of the beloved uh, OD hardware. And uh, before uh, we get on the presentation, uh, I also want to introduce uh, Phil Nelson, who is the director of creative and content at OpenCV. Phil produces the show, and if anything goes wrong, it's his fault. <laughs> That's right. It was me, Austin. I am your co-host with the co-most, the second banana, who is second to none. I'm also your plus one and only. It's Mr. Nelson. If you're nasty, but you, my dear friends on this show, can call me Phil. And I am here to remind you of a few things that we do every single episode of this show. The first of which is a special giveaway to you in the audience. Stay tuned. Later in the episode, our friends at Lexanus have generously decided that the winner of our trivia question today will get an oak. So stay tuned for that later in the episode in about 45 minutes or so. We're also taking questions from you in the audience and we'll do our best to provide the answers directly. If you stay tuned, use the Q&A button on the Zoom chat to ask your question there or post your question in the comments section wherever you're watching, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, Zoom, et cetera. Um, but before we get started, Satya, uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about the big launch we had at CVPR this past week? Oh, yes. So we launched OpenCV University, and uh, many people have taken our courses. What we uh, decided is that, look, courses are great, you know, but what we want from uh, what our, uh, you know, uh, students we're asking for is career guidance, right? So once people have taken some courses, some programs, first of all, at OpenCV University, we have created these paths so that people know exactly what they need to get uh, a job in computer vision and AI. So uh, basically you take a, a series of courses based on where you are in your career and what kind of ex expertise you already have. Once you're done with that, we will provide you career guidance, right? But you have to complete uh, some of our courses so that we will give you uh, more assistance in how to crack a job interview, right? Because we realize that ultimately knowledge is great, but knowledge with a job is even better, better. So that's the goal of OpenCV University, to function as a place where people not only get their learning, but also career guidance. And also we are going to build out a community where people can uh, collaborate. They can also talk to each other about projects, et cetera, about what jobs they have gotten, et cetera. So that's the gist of OpenCV University. We are not just about you know, courses anymore. We want to grow beyond the courses and create a platform for people who ha who are very serious about uh, a career in AI. Yeah, that's great. And again, yeah. thanks so much to everybody who stopped by the booth at CVPR last week. It was so awesome to put so many uh, smiling faces to all of the names that pop up in the chat window here on Zoom and in our email inboxes, et cetera. Um, if you stopped by, you saw some of the best swag we've ever had, these uh, sweet carpenter pencils. We gave away about 300 of those at the show, about 1,000 stickers, um, you know, 500 some handouts for OpenCV University and, and courses and et cetera. So uh, thanks so much, everybody, for, for joining us at that uh, awesome event. And a big a special thanks to our friends at Intel for the killer party that they let us be a part of um, on the uh, second day there. That's great. Uh, I also want to uh, remind people that, you know, OpenCV.org is a nonprofit organization, and we are always uh, looking for funding so that we can support the OpenCV library better. Our, uh, you know, our partnerships like uh, OpenCV University, uh, OpenCV AI Kit, OpenCV.ai, which is the consulting arm, they all help us fund uh, the library. But it's, it's not enough, obviously, because, uh, you know, uh, the library is humongous and it takes a lot of time and effort and people to maintain the library. 
So uh, we came up with this membership program. Large and small companies uh, can join our membership program. It's basically a donation because OpenCV.org is a nonprofit. And if you can convince your bosses, your people in charge of making such decisions to support OpenCV, that would be great. The lowest level of membership currently is at $500 a month. And the company who sponsors this would have their logo on the OpenCV uh, website, the main page along with other sponsors. So you'd be surprised if you go to opencv.org, how few companies actually support the effort, whereas uh, we all know that OpenCV is used by pretty much everybody. Anybody who does computer vision, they use the OpenCV library, but very few companies currently support uh, the library actively. Uh, so please uh, help us out. Okay. So with that, uh, um, we are ready for the show. Uh, Eric, welcome to the show again. You have been here before, and uh, I'd love to hear more about uh, Oak Series 2. It's very exciting hardware development. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the Series 2 of the OpenCV AI kit, so Oak for sure. So we can start at the, the beginning, so 2019, uh, where, when we started the company. And first on the why, so why we formed the company and built the platform and our old cameras. So we wanted to address the issue of the bicycle, bicycle safety, uh, because in the EU alone, there are about 2,000 cyclist fatalities every year. Uh, and usually it's because the drivers aren't focused on the road. So for example, when they are texting and driving. And we wanted to create a smart camera uh, that would detect the car trajectory and speed and warn the cyclists through the mobile app and car drivers through the strobe light, if the car trajectory was on the hit course. Uh, and this warning could prevent many injuries and even save lives. And our founder, uh, Brandon, created a prototype as seen on the uh, bottom right of the images. So he used the real sense for depth perception needed for the speed estimation. He used the Raspberry Pi high quality camera for the vehicle detection. Uh, and which was running on the Intel Neural Compute Stick uh, 2. A Raspberry Pi was used to connect all the hardware together. And the final solution, uh, well, it did work, uh, but it was bulky, it was unpractical, and the system consumed about 10 watts of power. And the development was, of course, uh, very slow because there was no easy integration between all these separate components. And we actually realized that we needed these five things from a platform. So a performant and embedded hardware solution that would be capable of performing spatial AI and CV pipelines work workflows on the edge. And we realized that we aren't actually the only ones that are looking for such a platform, and that's why we built it. So uh, as mentioned, the platform would need to be embedded, so a small size, low power, uh, and low weight, and also have a fast boot to be performant. So uh, high resolution, so uh, we have up to 32 megapixel cameras, multiple cameras with high FPS and low latency. Uh, we need a spatial perception, so either stereo depth, effective stereo, or time of flight. Uh, we needed to run the AI, so neural inferencing, uh, either object detection, semantic segmentation, or recognition, uh, and CV on the device itself, uh, which contains the feature extraction, motion estimation, edge detection, optical flow, and distortion, and so on. And with our hardware engineering capabilities, with the platform that we've built, and together with the expertise of the OpenCV team, uh, we've launched OpenCV AI Kit on the Kickstarter in 2022, which was a huge success. We raised over 1.3 uh, million USD, and we shipped more than 8,000 open source spatial AI cameras. And on the bottom right, you can see the original OD and O1, the USB versions, and also the OD PoE, so the power over Ethernet device as well on the, the left side. See, this is, we promised that version, which is on the left in the Kickstarter campaign, but we delivered the version which was on the right hand side uh, mm -hmm. with the case and everything. So that's that's the beauty of the community. They 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 trusted us to build this out. 
Yeah, a bunch of developers uh, don't really like to work just with the bare PCBAs. Uh, you can have a short circuit or yeah. you can quickly damage the device. That's why we realized that we needed the enclosure and that's why we shipped the devices with the enclosure. Especially after I burned out one of the OPD prototype units uh, by <laughs> accidentally plugging in the wrong barrel jack. Those things are dangerous, folks. Be uh, careful. The, the, yeah, so uh, I, also, I also did the same thing. Uh, but now those uh, obviously those bugs are fixed. These were early prototypes. Uh, if you plugged in the wrong voltage one, it would just uh, blow up. Yeah, it um, turns out uh, 12 volts is, is not what it wanted. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's five volts. And that's why we also should uh, adapter directly. Yeah, definitely. This was also just, you know, from a professional standpoint for me, this was the beginning of my journey becoming the voice of computer vision. <laughs> And uh, let, let's quickly talk about the hardware and the computation, so the capabilities that are on the OpenCV AI kit. So there we have an integrated uh, Myriad X VPU vision processing unit uh, from Movidius, which has uh, 1.4 tops of AI power, and you can run any AI model on the device itself. It has CV capabilities, uh, video encoding, H.264, H.265, and JPEG. It runs stereo depth pipelines with filtering, post-processing, and RGB depth alignment. Uh, it can run the cover camera up to 60 FPS, uh, that's object tracking, and is also low power. And based on these hardware capabilities, we built the depth AI library that abstracts uh, this hardware to get the maximum performance out of all the accelerated blocks of the chip. And so, uh, once again, uh, Eric, I just want to, pe for people who may not be familiar with, uh, you know, what these hardware specifications mean, just imagine, right, first of all, this is a camera, it's a special AI camera, which is capable of doing both depth estimation, as well as um, running a neural network in real time, both of them can happen at the same time, so, um, which is which is fantastic on its own, but you also see these other things that a lot of uh, platforms do not provide. Uh, you can do a lot of CV operations like image de-warping, warping, edge detection, feature tracking, et cetera, uh, out of the box, right? And also image, uh, you know, video encoding, which, uh, which you may not realize how important it is. Just imagine you have connected OakD or any other camera to uh, a Raspberry Pi. And if the Raspberry Pi is doing uh, the video encoding, it's not doing anything else. It's completely consumed, especially at 4K. I don't think uh, Raspberry Pi can keep up with, uh, you know, video encoding uh, at 30 frames a second uh, at 4K. So if all these things are done on the camera itself, the host computer or even Raspberry Pi that is, it is connected to, it is freed up to do other things. It can do other logic operations, et cetera. So all the heavy duty processing is done on the camera. And not only that, it has you know two cameras for depth estimation. It also has a color camera, uh, right? Which uh, which is for um, you know you you can do inference on it. You can run a neural network on this color camera, but it's not required. You can actually run neural networks on these black and white stereo cameras also. Uh, if let's say you're working at night and you know uh, you're going to fl uh, f flood fill the uh, the environment with IR light, then you can actually do uh, use the feed for the one of the stereo feed to do uh, object detection, et cetera, also. So very, very flexible uh, arrangement, which allows you to do a lot of things, right? And the power is five watt, which is pretty reasonable. Yeah, that's completely correct. Thank you for uh, the elaboration. Yeah. And you mentioned on the stereo depth from the yeah. stereo cameras. Uh, so let, let's actually check how did this this works. So the stereo depth that I mentioned. Um, so on the top right corner, you can see the stereo camera pair. Um, the what, what what it's doing is the approach is called disparity matching. So you find the feature on the left frame, and then you try to find the same feature on the right frame as well. And the distance between the same feature on the stereo pair frames uh, it's called the disparity, and it's measured in pixels. Um, and uh, if you have uh, the feature, so like an object close to the camera, the disparity will be high. And if you have it away from the camera, the disparity will be low, maybe only a few pixels. 
And the OpenCV library also provides the disparity matching algorithm for the stereo SGBM, which stands for a semi global block matching. Uh, and the, the code is on the left. So essentially, this algorithm, the disparity matching, is running directly on the OpenCV AI kit on the accelerated hardware. So its performance it goes up to about 90 FPS. And on the bottom right video, there is another representation of this, so how it works. So for example, we have the features, so my eyes, the nose, and mouth. Uh, and you know the position of these features, both on the left and the right frames. And you can do the triangulation to get the depth in the 3D spatial locations of these features. And the red lines in the middle frame represent the disparity in this case. And of course, the most important part of all this, import CV2. <laughs> Wouldn't forget. I mentioned the spatial AI a few times, so it's it's not the our cameras aren't just AI cameras or just CV cameras. Uh, and what's so special about the spatial AI? So it allows the machines to perceive the world like humans can. So what objects are and where they are in the physical world. So normal AI cameras would just provide the 2D object detection. So where on the in the pixel space. Um, so on the image, a landmark or an object is. While the spatial AI cameras provide 3D coordinates, so X, Y, and Z meters uh, in physical work, where they are. And that's what uh, is represented on the right side of the slide. And on the bottom left, we have another approach. It's called the stereo neural inference. So similar to what I showed on the previous slide, uh, it's it's running AI both on the left and the right side. So for example, the landmark detection, and then it's doing the triangulation uh, to get the spatial coordinates of the features. So for example, the eyes of the little world. And now that we have a brief understanding of the hardware and the software and some approaches, um, we can present the, the actual applications, the AI vision tasks. And later we can see how we actually use those uh, these AI vision tasks together with the depth. So first we have um, the object detection, and on the OpenCV AI kit we actually uh, provide on-device encoding for both uh, YOLO model and Open SSD model. And for the YOLO uh, we support all the different versions from the three to the eight, and um, we we do the decoding on the device itself, which means that you can run the spatial object localization. So this means that not only it will take the color frame and run the inference on the device, it will also take the depth frame from the device. And with the bounding box, it will provide 3D coordinates, so X, Y, and Z, where in physical space uh, an object is. So uh, this is used to detect the objects in 3D location. But with that, you can also do uh, what's the distance between the objects. So in in this case, in the video, we have uh, um, in, in the COVID days, uh, wh whether the person is too close to another person, you could send a, um, an alert. And with knowing where objects are uh, through the time, you can also uh, estimate the displacement over time, so uh, the speed estimation. And similar to the object detection, we have landmark detection and a uh, few of these applications are the pose estimation, the hand tracking, and the facial landmarks. And together with uh, the depth, you can get the 3D coordinates of these landmarks. So on the left uh, video, you can, for example, develop an AI trainer that will count your, uh, your reps, so how many squats and uh, push-ups you did, and if the form was correct, because it knows uh, where your joints are in 3D. Another AI um, vision task is recognition. So uh, from here, you can run the face recognition, age and gender, or emotion recognition, OCR, which stands for object character recognition, so text recognition, uh, person re-identification or vehicle re-identification, license plate recognition, and so on. So all of these tasks can be run on the OpenCV AI kit. And another, uh, which is quite popular, we have semantic segmentation, which is now, nowadays used a lot in the road segmentation of self-driving cars. And it's also used, for example, if you want the Zoom virtual background or deep learning, or sorry, blurring, just like I have currently. 
um, it, it's running um, semantic segmentation to know for each pixel on the image, whether it's a person or the background, and then it does the blurring of just the background. And with uh, semantic depth, it can perceive the and navigate around the unknown objects. So, for example, you can only get the depth and uh, the point cloud of the road instead of the background is, uh, itself. And then your self driving car or robot can navigate only around uh, those areas. And uh, we can go now to the 2021, uh, which is when we launch our uh, second Kickstarter campaign, the Old Delight, together with the Open CD build. Uh, we we um, got all the learnings from the previous launches, and we incorporated it to make the new spatial AI camera that was the smallest, the lightest, and the most affordable uh, up to date. And we shipped about 10,000 of these cameras in 2020. And the OD Lite has the same processing power. It has full depth AI ecosystem support, and it has the ease of use of the original OpenCV AI kit. And so uh, funny thing, uh, recently we went to watch the Transformer 3D movie um, uh, with, with the kids. So my older son, um, he said that I want to make a 3D uh, you know, um, video. And we actually used OGD's black and white two stereo pair, and we recorded those videos. He actually wrote the code for recording those videos. And uh, and then, you know, we uh, initially we tried to do the uh, uh, red blue glasses, but the filters were not good enough. So you would not see the depth properly. But mm -hmm. we ended up, uh, you know, putting the side by side and then uh, putting it on a, a you know, um, a mobile phone. And then using a viewer, a 3D viewer, to uh, to uh, to see this in 3D. So for people who are interested in those uh, little applications, it's not a color camera; it's a black and white camera, the stereo pair. But still, uh, you know, it's stunning to see, especially if, uh, to show kids how a stereo works. Uh, it's it's very informative. And how because it's it also a line the the distance between the two cameras is very close to what a normal uh, human eye is, right? And that was on purpose. And so when you, yeah, so when you <laughs> when you actually use the uh, camera and record the video, you can just plug it in and it works beautifully. You can see everything in 3D. Yep, exactly. And some of the applications that we found, because the OD light was very small and very lightweight spatial AI cameras, it was actually picked up by Drove Community, um, and many applications were developed with it. Uh, it was used, for example, in localization applications, uh, for follow me applications, safety landing, and so on. And to, to dive a bit more into this, uh, so the CDRA um, from University of Madrid developed a solution on top of the uh, OD Lite for the OpenCV AI competition. Uh, and it uses the stereo image pair to perform visual odometry. So that's on the bottom right. So visual odometry is the localization. So where in physical space the camera is and the drone uh, as well, compared to the stuff. And since the OD light is also a spatial AI camera, they also mapped where objects are in physical space while the drone was moving around. And on the top right, there is an output from the OpenLander project, which was developed by uh, Stefan. Uh, he trained a semantic segmentation model that finds a suitable place to do an emergency landing with the drone. So ideally, you wouldn't want to for the drone to land on in the middle of the road or on the roof, uh, but rather on the grass fields. And on the bottom left, there is an application of the drone follow me um, by uh, Richard. Drone knows where the person is in 3D. Uh, and it tries to be about two meters away uh, from them all the time. And besides the object tracking that it does, one could also run, for example, a person reidentification model on the device. Uh, so the whole application would be more robust. And uh, in case the tracker would lost the person, uh, in between it could still do the reidentification to find it. That's awesome. 
And finally, we have the Oak S2 in 2022. Uh, so this is our Series 2 often. There are a bunch of different variations, as you, as you can see, about uh, eight cameras uh, initially. Um, and they, they come in with a variety of different, uh, with different features. So for example, with wide field of view or normal field of view, with active or passive stereo, with or without the night vision, and also either for PoE or USB for both power and connectivity. And these devices are also smaller and lighter compared to our previous OpenSea AI kits. So first, let's check the wide field of view options. Um, Can I tell so a little story before we go there um, uh, on the 2022? So in the 2021 20, model, when we were running the Kickstarter campaign, as you can imagine, this was uh, the middle of COVID, right? This was, and we ran into, uh, I mean, Luxonis ran into several issues with, uh, you know, you people would not even get uh, components for building these uh, cameras. And, the global uh, supply chain hurricane was the first. Yeah, the global supply chain was really bad. And everybody, I know that most Kickstarter campaigns, they were delayed by a year, one year. And uh, Luxonis delivered it, I think, three or four months before the time. And the reason they could do that is that they had six different designs for the same camera, right? The components could be replaced and be uh, by, by another similar, uh, almost same component, right? So they had six different designs and they were able to pull it off. So, you know, we delivered the Oak uh, D lights three months or four months before the actual uh, promise date. So that was a little story about, you know, how to manage supply chain and how clever uh, the team is. And how yeah, we actually do. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, we actually bought the components before we even started the design because yeah, th those were the times that you, you really didn't know what you would be able to get in, for example, two months when you finish the design. So you had to right. do the procurement upfront and then start the hardware design based on the components that you actually could procure. Oh, God. yeah. We, okay. we talked. To, we talked a lot about this. A lot about this back uh, when it was when it was happening. Where there were you know certain components, even simple things like capacitors, certain kinds of capacitors, where the lead time used to be two weeks for you know say a thousand quantity of a thousand, and that lead time went to one year. <laughs> And it, it, you know, it's it's so hard to make anything with those kinds of crazy constraints, but uh, somehow the Luxonis team pulled through. Yeah, I, I think for one component, it was also dimensioned like, oh, the, that component will be available in September, and, and we were like, oh, one month, okay, that's cool. Oh no, it's it's in one year in one month. Right. Uh, so it, it wow. was a a challenge, but we got through. Now it's uh, looking better now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, to the wide field of view. So we offer the Oak cameras with uh, wide field of view as well, uh, as well as the normal field of view. And the diagonal FOV here is 150 degrees. And wide field of view is great for localization as the cameras can find the descriptors uh, which are used for localization afterwards. And uh, cameras also do the on-device undistortion and the de-warping. And some com uh, some customers also use three of these to get the full 360 uh, perception. And on the bottom left, uh, I actually saw uh, the, this device on the ICRA conference in London last month by AgileX, uh, Agile, AgileX.ai. So it, it has the three wide field of view cameras and also the LiDAR on top for uh, teleoperation. So that was pretty cool to see. That's great. Even our uh, friends at FarmNG, FarmNG is a company that produces robots for agriculture, and uh, they also chose uh, Oak D for, um, you know, obviously the uh, this this ruggedized version of Oak D for uh, for their robot. And well, uh, they have like full size like tractors and stuff, like yeah. big ass. We're not we're not talking about like these little like this little robot here. We're talking like a full size John Deere. Yeah. Yeah. And then another variation is the Pro version. So uh, what it actually is, the Pro version has integrated uh, two things. So it has the IR illumination LED, uh, which is used for night vision, and it also has IR dot projector, which is used for active stereo. 
and to get uh, more into this, so what is active stereo? The issue uh, with passive stereo is that when surfaces have no texture, uh, are very problematic because, as mentioned before, uh, stereo is used uh, by it's used based on the disparity matching, so matching one feature from the left to the right frame. But if there are no features, so for example, if there is a blank wall, you won't be able to uh, to do the disparity matching, and the depth output will be bad. So on the right side, we have uh, both passive and active stereo comparisons of the white wall, and uh, in case of the active stereo, you can see that the depth, it's a nice blue uh, depth, which is which what you would expect from the wall. And for the passive stereo, there, there are a bunch of invalid pixels. And the random noise pattern that the projector projects in the IR um, is, it, uh, you can see on the bottom left. And then it also, the pro versions also have the night vision, uh, the illumination LED, which allows you to run your AI and computer vision pipelines, even in low light or no light environments. So um, you can also run object detection just on the black and white frames. And another option, um, in, in this simple example, uh, we're running the stereo camera pair at 60 FPS and every and if every odd frame, we have illumination LED turned on, which is seen on the left frame. And every uh, even frame, we have the dot projector turned on or on the right frame. Uh, so we can generate accurate depth using active stereo at 30 FPS. And then we can also uh, run our CV and AI algorithm, such as feature tracking or you know, matching for localization at 30 FPS as well in no light environments. So it's switching between the two very fast. So uh, the the dot projector is synchronized with the camera shutter, right? These are okay, and also yeah. the LEDs can be turned on and off uh, that fast at thirty frames a second. Yeah, exactly. At, at sixty. Uh, okay. Yeah, every other frame. Okay. Okay. And That's... we have full support for that in the library itself already. That's very, very nice. Can I uh, re-say this just in case some people who are not very familiar with uh, or, or who are beginners uh, may not have uh, understood the how, how big of a deal it is, right? So what's happening is that let's say you are in complete darkness, right? There is no uh, illumination. So you can turn on this. There are two things in the camera. One is the dot projector, which projects a dot pattern, right? Uh, and this is IR dot projector, right? So you cannot actually see it with naked eye, only this camera can see it. You also have uh, an IR illumination, uh, you know, a light bulb. It's almost like a IR light bulb inside it, which can illuminate the environment. It's uh, it's not projecting dots, but it is just projecting the, you know, it's just flooding uh, the, uh, the room with light. Now, there are two things we want to do. We want to do AI on it. We want to detect what objects are there in the scene, and the second thing is that we want to figure out what is what are the you know what is the depth of uh, the scene you know what at what depth are these objects located? Now, uh, usually we use uh, the RGB camera to detect where things are, and we use the depth cameras to detect uh, you know how far things are. Now here, because RGB cameras are useless, RGB cameras do not respond to IR light. In fact. They have filters that cut out IR light. So to the I, I, uh, to, to the RGB camera, the room is completely dark. But the stereo cameras, they do have, uh, you know, uh, the stereo cameras are not uh, meant for viewing. It is, you know, it's okay. You will be able to see the output of the stereo camera, but they also respond to near IR, you know, in the IR uh, uh, part of the spectrum. It also uh, the the pixel values are also affected by it. That is why you can have this night vision where you put in the floodlight and the stereo cameras will be able to see. But now we want to do both of these things simultaneously. We want to detect where an object is, uh, but and also find the depth of that object. To do that, we um, on on one frame we flood it with IR illumination, right? Uh, the LED, and then this image uh, becomes everything becomes visible and you can do detection on it. And in the next stream, we turn off the uh, you know, uh, illumination LED 
and just turn on, turn on the dot projector. The dot projector helps in accurately getting the depth because it, as you can see on the right-hand side image, it uh, texturizes the scene, right? It is putting a lot of dots in the scene, which makes it easy for stereo matching algorithms to perform. So now you can do both AI as well as uh, depth estimation using these uh, stereo cameras, right? And you're able to solve the problem even without the RGB camera. You're able to solve the problem in, in the dark, right? So it's it's a very nice, um, very nice feature, which if not properly implemented, which, I mean, OGD implements it, but if not properly implemented, you cannot even do such uh, sophisticated things. Yeah, you need the full control through the both the cameras and the uh, laser dot projector and illumination yep. LED. And now we go to 2023. Uh, and we in 2023, we launched the uh, Ray, which is uh, robotics access for everyone. Uh, it's a small desktop robot that was designed for development and education. So instead of spending hours or even uh, days, if you have a more complex setup, uh, trying to add your OpenCV uh, kit to your robot and try something out, you can just spend a few minutes uh, to get up and running with your first uh, robot app. Uh, and we will also provide some open source applications that will work out of the box. So for example, 3D mapping, follow me, mode, sentry mode, and a few others as well. Uh, so it, it has integrated both camera. So the same technology that powers the OpenCVI kit is integrated into this small little robot as well. And will also perform on-device bio and sparse slam. So that's the localization and also the 3D mapping of the world around it. And it also has the integrated arm that's running Linux, which allows all of these applications to run on the, on the robot itself. Yeah, you can look back in the show archives way back on episode 81, about seven months ago, we had a whole episode dedicated to Ray. And here is a, a quick video. It's just running the pre-alpha video of the Ray uh, moving around the office. Oh, they kissed. <laughs> <laughs> They're in love. And another thing that we launched in 2023, uh, which is actually together with the Ray, is the Robot Hub, which is the fleet um, cloud management solution. We currently offer remote monitoring and live streaming, uh, app development and app deployment, uh, which is easy to use, and also device analytics. And it's already available on, on the link provided there. And here is a quick demo of the robot hub. So you can log in, you can see all the connected devices um, that you have. So to get up and running, you just need to install the robot hub agent to your uh, Linux computer. It, sh it should get installed in about 20 seconds. And once you install the agent, it connects directly to our server, which means that your camera, your robot, will be available through the portal itself. And when you have connected the robot, the camera, you can then deploy the detections and also see all the analytics of the platform. And you can also do the live stream. As an old web developer, I, it warms my heart to see so many great web apps being built with this awesome physical technology. So uh, Ray is built on top of Keembe, right? It is, a, uh, it is a more advanced processor from Intel. Uh, could you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. So the main benefit of the Kimbe is that it has integrated quad-core ARM processor on the chip itself, which means it can run the Linux. And if you have the Linux, it's much easier development. Uh, we allow users to deploy custom applications on the device itself through our robot hub. And you can also, of course, SSH into the device itself as well. Got it. So uh, it means that uh, you know when OpenCV AI kit, you have to plug it in into a host like a Raspberry Pi or a computer 
for it to work, right? So it's a camera that is smart. But uh, this uh, Keembe based uh, uh, solutions, they have a built in, uh, you know, processor and you can run Linux on it. So you they can be completely independent, right? They don't need to be plugged into another computer. Is there uh, is there a, C, uh, a new version of Oak which uh, will be based on Kimbe? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, we plan to have the Percept line. Uh, it's currently in our early release store, yeah. but because there were some issues with the chip itself and then Intel dropping support, we haven't pursued that further. Uh, and we are actually, I'm going to announce something at the end as well. Um, okay. With with the with something. And in 2023, we also launched the OD long range and short range. Um, so on the top, on the top right, you can see the OD short range, which has two centimeter baseline distance, which is perfect for up to about one meter of depth perception. So for example, you can place robots, something like that. And on the bottom, we have the OD long range, which has M12 swappable lenses. So it and 15 centimeter baseline distance between the, the large base, baseline distance and then the short baseline distance is five centimeters. So for example, if you want to have um, longer depth perception, you can swap the lenses to get a to have a narrow field of view, which would then result uh, in longer depth perception. And on the left side, you can see on the highway the stereo depth perception that is able to, to get with the narrow field of view lenses. So up to about 100, 150 meters with very narrow, narrow field of lenses and wide baseline distance between the stereo camera thing. The short, the short range one kind of looks like a lemur. Like one of those one of those Madagascar animals. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. <laughs> and something that we are currently launching as well is the OV SR POE. So the short range and the POV version, which has the time of flight sensor. So besides the stereo, we found out that some customers, some applications require time of flight sensors instead. There are pros and cons both to the stereo and both to the time of flight um, depth perception. And here we actually have both. So you wow. can see on the frame, we have the short baseline distance, two centimeter. Uh, and here we have the time of flight. And what we plan to do um, is to actually fuse together both of these depth maps to get the best of both worlds. So, um, for example, stereo issues are if you if you don't have texture, um, but the, for example, time of flight issues would be if you have a black surface with, where black surface absorbs all the IR, then with the time of flight projector, you can actually see anything. And uh, yeah, there, there are some other uh, things. So hopefully the use together that will provide great results to, for example, pick and place machines. Is the demo on the right there, is that with fused depth or is that just with time of flight or just stereo? Currently it's just the time of flight. Okay. The depth is yes. really good on this. I was just noticing, you know, you can you can see like contours of the nose and eyes, like that's that's pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. Usually that's time because of the flight. short range also. Yeah, exactly. And there's another thing that we are currently launching. So uh, about three weeks ago, we posted on our LinkedIn about a new camera type, the FFC. And this is actually the thermal sensing camera. So we haven't yet released the specs. So here they are. Uh, it's about QVGA, so about 250 by 190 resolution. Quite wide field of view, um, long IR um, uh, temperature camera, which is quite quite accurate. And the applications that you can use it for is, for example, in night vision. So for night vision sensing, for example, for animals, people, vehicles, stuff like that. For if you're hunting machine, Bigfoot or other cryptids. <laughs> yep. Uh, for machine and equipment monitoring, uh, for example, in fire detection, fire safety. Uh, QA, uh, quality assurance, and quality control of specific goods, and so on. This is this is great news because you know we have been uh, I've, uh, we have been working with some LWIR cameras. Uh, you know the the camera hardware itself is great, 
But the software these companies provide, these are horrible, horrible software. Uh, you cannot do anything with it. They're, I mean, the basic APIs are so badly uh, structured. Um, it's it's great to see some cameras which would be affordable. First of all, these other cameras are also very expensive. And uh, the software is just a nightmare to deal with. You know, something that you would think that, oh, I want to change the FPS. So there should be an API which change, says that, oh, change the FPS. And no, you have to some send some bytecode around <laughs> oh, really, really horrible support for Linux. Set the um, registers and stuff. Yeah, exactly. That kind like of what, stuff. Yeah, like what year is it? <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, I got really badly uh, bitten by this because uh, I had a proposal for a client, and these things I thought that oh, you know, just setting these things would be uh, how many, you know, a few hours, right? <laughs> and it has taken us days to figure out each little bit. Um, going through the documentation, specs, et cetera. And uh, so we'll see. I mean, I'm very excited about this uh, thermal sensing camera. F famous yeah, we... last words of the engineer. How hard could it be? <laughs> <laughs> I, exactly. I hear some, I, I see some comments on uh, <laughs> on the on the uh, chat. I'm not going to comment which, uh, which camera company it is, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, they are all the same, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, and of course, we plan to nicely uh, have the integration to our depth AI library, which should provide all the ease of use. So, for example, also combining the AI and the thermal results. So, for example, do the AI on the color camera and then um, superimpose the depth of the thermal image on there to get, for example, the temperature of a face or of a person, uh, which, which should be pretty straightforward. Yep. And the uh, final announcement that we haven't yet uh, announced from Luxonis is the Robotic Vision 4.4, uh, which is the new chip nice. that we are currently working on. And we are extremely excited about it. Um, and we are currently building on top of the new chip that will uh, power our next generation of spatial AI cameras. Uh, it so will is, have... this, is this an exclusive announcement here to the episode of this show? Yeah, it's the first an announcement on the internet. All right. Awesome. Amazing. And of course, yeah, we will provide more information about the, the new chip in the upcoming weeks on our yeah, socials. Um, and as, as you can see, it, it has much more computational power uh, and additional hardware accelerators. Uh, and yeah, some info can be seen on the side. And likely the roadmap uh, will be that uh, we get some early release products in the Q4 this year and, and then Q1, Q2 next year will officially release uh, these devices. And as you can see, for example, the AI of 48, um, or 48 into eight tops or uh, 12 FP16 tops, which is much, much more compared to the original uh, OpenCV AI kit. It will also come with the Octa-4 ARM CPU, so you will be able to run uh, quite a lot of stuff <laughs> simultaneously on there. Uh, it, it will have the computer vision um, hardware accelerators for stereo depth, for the warp engine, optical flow, feature detection, descriptor detection and matching, and template matching. It will have quite an impressive ISP, so uh, very high resolution, high frame rate uh, with HDR and the uh, image stabilis stab stabilizations uh, on there, uh, video encoding, and much, much more. That looks solid. That looks awesome. Yeah, that's a beefy, beefy feature set here. Really looking forward to hearing more. Yeah, definitely. As I mentioned, more uh, information will be released over the next few weeks on our uh, social, so I guess LinkedIn, Twitter, stuff. And that is actually it from uh, my presentation. So this is more, more for the future plans of Luxonis and the uh, OpenCV AI kit besides the original one and the series two and now the <laughs> series four and so on. Awesome. Thanks so much. That's great news. Awesome presentation. And so if folks want to follow Luxonis and find out more about this Robotics Vision Core 4, where are the best places for them to follow you all? I would say on our LinkedIn. So it's Luxonis or on Twitter. All right, excellent. Um, go ahead and unshare your screen there. 
All right. Uh, thanks, Eric. That was fantastic. Um, I think now is a great time to do our giveaway. Um, Eric, would you like to tell folks what they will win if they answer my trivia question correctly? Yeah, so it's the one of the open CD AI kits, the light, so Oak D Light. Excellent. Oak D Light. So if you need a reminder or if this is just your first time joining us, we do a trivia giveaway on every episode of this show. Often it's for open CV courses or something offered by our guests, as in this case, by our generous guest from Luxanus. I'm going to ask a trivia question that I've come up with based on the slides from the presentation, and your job is to answer that trivia question first in the Zoom chat. Now, if you have won in the last couple of months, please do not answer and give other people a chance to win. Also, if you answer before I'm finished asking the question, I will disqualify you. Do not <laughs> test me. <laughs> Don't so test no me. No mind reading I'll allowed. No <laughs> mind reading allowed. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. <laughs> so um, <laughs> during the presentation, we got a little short history lesson about Oak and uh, Oak Delight and, and, and so on. We learned a little bit about Ray. What year and month? was the original OpenCV AI kit Kickstarter campaign launched. What year and month was the original OpenCV <laughs> AI kit Kickstarter campaign launched? Ah, uh, folks are getting close. Now you're right there. Not quite. Off by a couple of months, folks. Somebody, somebody's off by a whole year. <laughs> May 1985. No, I believe that's when Doc. I, I believe that's when Doc oh, Brown then invented. Four would have been the right answer. <laughs> no, I think May 1985 is when Doc Brown invented time travel. So shout out for the Back to the Future reference there. Um, oh, they're so close. They're so close. All right, there. All right, I see. Uh, Lauravel Silva. Oh no, that's that's incorrect. Uh, Sub Subramanya Shishadri. Uh, the answer we were looking for was July 2020, July 2020. Um, please send one email to phil at opencv.org and we will make sure that you get your prize of an OPD light thanks to our generous guest from Luxanus. Now, I think uh, we've got a, we've got a, quite a few questions here. Mostly people were, that's were wondering- Oh, yeah, that's OPD right light there. that you're going to get. Yeah, it's a beaut. Um, and it is very much light. Um, we were, I remember during the campaign for that, I, I was pushing hard for us to try to license the song Groove is in the Heart by D-Light, but it was a little bit, a little bit too expensive. <laughs> um, yes, so we've got a few questions here. Mostly people are interested in some of the stats and specifics on Oak D uh, series, the, the Oak series two modules. Uh, we've got a lot of folks asking about uh, different focal lengths and things like that. Um, I was going to, I have a question from me first. I know Lexanus has been doing some events like we saw you all at the uh, Embedded Vision Summit last month. Are there any events that Lexanus is planning to go to in the next few months or this, the rest of the year? The ROSCON, definitely. Uh, probably also IROS and then the, well, that's it for, for this year and then likely the CES next uh, year in January. Good old CES. I tell you what, I do not miss being in Las Vegas in January. <laughs> um, people who know me know that I, I used to work, I used to help design the booths for Occipital, another computer vision startup back in the day for CES every year, and it was a whole lot of work right after New Year. So um, uh, yes, we all, a big quick shout out as well to uh, Roscon. Roscon registration is open now. It's uh, October 20 to uh, 22nd, I think, or is it? No, October 18 to 20. Um, and then PX4 Developer Summit is uh, 20 to the 22nd in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I am planning to be there. OpenCV may be doing something there as well, so stay tuned for that. Um, we're actually pushing up against time here, so let's get a couple of quick questions. Uh, I know Luxon some people were asking about the early access stuff that Luxanus has been putting out. Would you like to talk a little bit about some of these uh, the early access gear that's on the store right now? Yeah, sure. So I, I actually have to check as well which devices are currently in early access because we develop so many at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. currently we have the long range 
uh, which I mentioned, the OD, the short range POE, which has the time of life, is in the early uh, axis as well. The ray, the small robot, um, the time of flight sensor, the FFC, and also some SOMs as well. So if you go to the shop.luxonis.com uh, on the top side, you have the early access where you can see all the new and cool hardware that we uh, are developing. Fantastic. Yeah, and get that early access stuff. Be the first kid on your block to get the uh, the new stuff. Um, Stefan DeWolf would like to know, uh, can the can the segment anything model run on Oak Series 2? Um, so the the Oak camera and the accelerator that, that's on there, it's about 1.4 tops, which is used more for the edge AI, which means that some models like object detection, like YOLO, Tiny, of course, they will run at 30 FPS. For any kind of heavier models, like segment anything, that would probably be way too heavy uh, because you would need a few <laughs> NVIDIA GPUs to get it performantly. Right. In fact, segment anything is uh, not even used uh, in the real world as is, right? The best use of segment uh, SAM model is to actually train another uh, model. So for example, because it segments everything for you, it's very easy to then go and pick the right segments uh, that you want to, that you're interested in, right? That way you can uh, collect data very quickly, but it is such a huge model that you will never use it for uh, inference. It would be very expensive to use it for inference. So we have been using uh, it internally and the main use case is basically using it uh, in conjunction, you know, giving it to the data labor labelers who actually use it very efficiently to create a segmentation model. And then you can use DeepLab V3 uh, or you know, a smaller model like that to uh, actually use in production. Totally, totally makes sense to me. Um, yeah, we're, we're pushing up against time here. Uh, Eric, any last thoughts for the, for the audience here? Um, yeah, I, I guess you can subscribe to us on LinkedIn or Twitter for any kind of new notifications on the RBC4 and likely the Kickstarter uh, in next year Q1 um, for the RBC4 based devices. All right, you heard it here first, folks. Satya, you want to take us home? Well, I also wanted to, uh, the, the Luxonis uh, Discord channel was, is also very, very useful for people who are starting out or who uh, have any problems with the device. Uh, you know, many of the engineers are there and they reply, but the community also helps out. So uh, that's another place to go. <clears throat> yeah, real, real active community there. Um, final thoughts, Dr. Malik. Yeah, thank you so much, Eric. We are uh, so glad you presented the uh, path forward and we are very really excited about the next year's Kickstarter campaign as well. Uh, and so uh, thank you so much. And thank you, Phil, for uh, putting this show together. And as always, uh, thanks our community for showing up. Uh, sorry, we were away for three weeks because we were uh, at CVPR and then a few, uh, a few of our host uh, guests actually canceled. So, but we will be here. Uh, we, we are going to actually, moving forward, we are going to decrease the frequency of uh, OpenCV weekly webinar. And we will basically wait until we have, uh, you know, solid guests uh, so that uh, we don't have to do, we don't want to do this every week. So the frequency will decrease, but maybe it would be a couple of times a month or so. We'll keep you informed, you know, so that we don't run into this problem of uh, canceling on the last moment. Uh, so that's a little announcement I wanted to make as well. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. We'll keep you informed. <laughs> yeah, that's right, everybody. We have a very big announcement coming up later this week or early next week. So stay tuned for that. Take care of yourselves out there. Take care of somebody else if you can and have a great day wherever you may be. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the show. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to tap the little bell icon to be notified when new episodes drop. This week's episode was brought to you by OpenCV University, nine courses across four programs built by the experts in the field. Learn more at opencv.org university.